Niners draft picks, right? Those first four guys all look like they're going to have a role on this team pretty early. Yeah, I, I think that the draft class has a chance to be pretty good. I think, and I, I, I was spent some time thinking about this guy. You know, you, me, those of us that live on the West Coast that just have probably watched more USC than they've deserved over the years. I mean, they were last year was a joke. Uh, I mean, really, an, an all time embarrassment. I mean, I would imagine people like that have been following the program for 30, 40 years. It's got to be one of the worst years in the history of the program, right? Last year at USC. I mean, coach got yeah. fired I mean, after and a couple they, of years. They had some, you know, before Pete, I had some pretty lean years, but that was De- definitely bad. the worst year of the last 20 years. And Drake Jackson, you know, th- there was there was a contingent of people thought going into his junior season, he had a chance to be like a top 15, top 20 pick. Top defensive linemen just don't fall. Yet the weight stuff, we talked about this yesterday, and he fell. To me, it's insane that he fell to the end of the second round. But he got caught in the tsunami that was the negativity around the program. Price is a good example of he's really good. He was also in kind of a weird spot, right? LSU the last couple of years have been a disaster. Now, he's a running back. So his ceiling, unless you're like Saquon Barkley, is only so – like you're going in the second or the third round. And Danny Gray, I, I mean, I think those three guys, We there was a play today where Price ran so hard that he ran in to this wide receiver blocking for him that the wide receiver got elevated, hit the ground, and you could tell, felt like he got hit by a Mack truck. Absolutely ruined him. And this guy's got to be thinking, all I'm told is like, Taylor, you got to block, you got to block, you got to block for Kyle, you got to block, and I'm blocking my ass off. And then the running back just fucking destroys me. And then Danny Gray's making plays down the field. Now we'll see. To me, the thing with Burford is clearly he's in the mix. Like, I, it's hard to say a lock, but fourth round pick, like, he's going to lock to probably make the team at minimum to be like a guard center swing guy. Once the preseason, like, he's going to have a chance to win the starting position. And if you get a starter at guard or center, in the fourth round, like that's a good pick. But like the other three guys aren't just making the team. Drake Jackson is going to play a lot. Drake Jackson is going to sack the quarterback this year. I don't know how many plays this guy will, you know, or how many carries this guy will get, but I would lean more than you think. Price is scoring touchdowns this year. Now that could be two, that could be eight, depending on injuries and Mitchell's health. And, you know, if Trey Sermon comes on or Jeff Wilson, like there are other factors that are somewhat out of his control. But he's playing. And when Austin, sorry, let me just correct him. Austin Mack was the wide receiver. Who Austin Mack killed him. I mean, destroyed. And Danny Gray, not only is he making the team, like he has a unique skill. And his skill matches up now with the quarterback that he can stretch the field. And remember, you and I were talking to John Lindster and OTAs, like they were just they thought he was just a good wide receiver, like a very skilled player in the open field, can make guys miss. A couple plays a day, you just see his speed, like he's got talent. And like I would say again, very early. And the one thing that I learned back when I worked in the league and I've carried this with me today is like, you can't young guys overreact to the first week or the first two weeks because you get used to the other guy's moves. And I think Trent Williams said yesterday, and this isn't necessarily what I'm talking about, but like, you know, we're going up against defense. That's really talented. That knows all our shit. (laughs) So it's like, they know all of our plays. And I do think that reflects young guys. Like, why can young guys look good? Because after a while, like, Danny Gray knows exactly Lenore's moves, and he knows how to beat him. Well, what happens? The preseason game, they don't look as good. I'm not saying they will, but that's just, there are all these steps as a young player where you know, like, Trent's going to be fine, Bosa's going to be fine, Fred's going to be fine. That's what you never know. The one thing I feel 100% certain on is the two guys. Like, Danny Gray, we'll see when he gets against real corners, physicality, SMU, you wouldn't say they're the most, play the most physical teams. I know Price does play in the SEC. Everyone in the league thought he was like the hardest runner in the country. Like that guy's physical. That's going to translate. And Drake Jackson, ultimately, I don't know how many plays a game right now he's getting, but if he just gets eight to 10 pass rushes, he's got fucking pass rush talent. He had a play today in one-on-ones. He's got an inside move. He's clearly got the ability to bend. He's explosive. We know that the the D-line coach, like those two guys, that's working. The O-lineman, we'll see. I mean, it's just he's going to get live reps in preseason games against the against the Vikings. Like, he's going to have to earn his spot. And Danny Gray, it's like, well, how does he handle press coverage? How does he handle not knowing the coverage? Like, there, there's bigger steps. Like, I know for a fact, Price, outside zone, hit that shit. He's going to be fine. 
he Andrew runs Jackson. like a Kyle Shanahan guy, like Elijah Mitchell. It happens sure. fast. It happens hard. And and you know in these practices, not a lot of things. When something physical happens in space, it stands out because not a lot of things really physical happen in space in a no. practice. Fred Warner hitting somebody that stands out. The Jimmy Ward Debo kind of collision, right? Yep. Ty Davis Price. Uh, you know, I think the thing, the two plays we saw today. Is, is there Danny a chance Gray. Mac? What are the chances Mac has a pretty big bruise on his back? Hi. He got he's crushed helpful. as he's trying to block, man. Um, and I think it shows Ty Davis Price is a through, not a round guy, which is what Kyle Shanahan wants. He wants you going through. Yeah. Uh, Danny Gray had two catches back to back, well, not back to back, almost back to back. One in which he had a five yard gap between him and Ambry Thomas. He beat Ambry Thomas, caught it. Another right in front of us where Ambry was on him. Nate Sudfeld threw it this time, little underthrown. Danny had to kind of come back in the air for it. So Ambry's right there. You could take positive or negative. Like Ambry had a chance to make a play on the ball, which has been one of the things with Ambry Thomas, right? Is being there, but not breaking the play up. Biggest pick but, of the season. But remember, yeah, underthrown. Remember Danny Gray. What well, were one of the things with him coming out? Drops. Hands. Well, he goes up and I, you, a, Ambry, I thought, played it pretty well. Danny Gray made the play on a contested catch. So I think you're right. It's not going to be about volume for him. He is a, he is a spice. The main the stake on this Niners offense is Ayuk and Debo and the run game and Trey Lance. Kittle. But Danny Gray is a little bit, he's a little rosemary, maybe this year. He's a little spice. He gives them a little something different, which they can take advantage of. And um, the question with him is, I think, or the key with him is he's not going to get five targets a game, right? So when Kyle draws it up for him. Is he going to make the play? And I thought today in some chances to make plays, he made plays. He's going to get he, a few opportunities. Yeah, and he's not a lock. Like, if you told me he's obviously he's going to be on the 53-man roster, but, like, in sweats, week one, believable. But there are going to be games. It might happen week one. It might be week six where he's going to be active, and it might be because of injuries, that he's going to get some scheme plays. It's on him and Trey to hit him, right? I mean, the pa pass got to be there, and if it's there, he's got to come down with it. Because more than likely, if the coach is scheming it up, that's going to have a chance to hit, right? We've seen that because it's going to be a specific play. Might yeah. be a play action with him kind of beeline on the back, just going 80 miles an hour down the backside, which I, like you said, to me, the, the second catch with the contested one with Ambry in his face, I love when a, when a wide receiver kind of high points and has to like, cause the guy's like pin it against his body or his helmet. Like that takes a lot of concentration because you're like in midair and you real he's right in front of you, and then you because he I couldn't tell like against his chest or his helmet, but like that's that's a concentration catch, you know. It the ones are you either got good hands or you don't if it's gonna hit you in the hands, right? Those the ones where you got to high point it with a guy in your face, like that's the NFL, you know. That's the that, that to me that's even the biggest difference. Like doesn't happen that much in college. Like the most a lot of catches in the NFL. And PBUs are like right there. That's a play that happens once every other series in the league, right? It's like, damn, what a catch, right? Yeah. Like, damn, what a play by the DB. But it's like, it could go either way. And it's like the best wide receivers or just functional wide receivers. A lot of guys, a lot of wide receivers, guys that play in the NFL have a good chance to bring that down. Just like, honestly, they have the advantage over the DB. Like, I, I think if you just watch the league, like most DBs aren't like – PBUs are kind of outlier. It's usually because of a bad throw more than like, boom, bang it. Nope. Like that, that ain't happening. But you still bad throw. You still do the nope. Oh, well, yeah. If it would have right. hit his head, Ambry would have been like, I got it. I was you right know? there. Uh, Gavin asks, what's the running back depth chart going to look like this year for the Niners? You know, we were talking about this today with our buddy, John Dickinson, because you got Elijah Mitchell, you got Ty Davis price. Well, Mitchell's a starter, right? Yep. Jeff Wilson Jr. I would say he would be the two just based on seniority, resume. Pretty good. He's a good player. I mean, he's, is he a two? You know, I, I like him as a lot of three, but I just think it's part of being an old school coach. Do you just give a rookie, make him the number two right away? You know, didn't take long for Elijah Mitchell, but Kyle will pivot fast. Yeah. All you got to do is run a couple hard. He's like, he'll just give you carries. There's always some spots for Jermichael Hasty and the Trey Sermon. I thought Sermon had a couple moments. I had a couple bad angles, but it, it looked like he was running hard. To me, Sermon, I guess we'll get into this. It's kind of crazy. They they have a preseason game like next Friday. 
I would say he would be one of the guys that leading up to that game we'll be talking about. Like, it's a pretty big moment for him to like, yeah. Okay, Trey Sermon's making plays, right? Right. Because <laughs> is it inconceivable that it's like, listen, he just doesn't fit. We'll just cut him. Maybe they put him on the practice squad or what? I don't think he's a lock to make the team. And I think they're so good, they're not worried about like, wait, you just third round, like whatever. Like they're not going to be caught up with that. Like if he doesn't earn it, he will not be on the team. Which you can't always say about last year's third round pick. I would say watching their team, I, they wouldn't even hesitate if they Especially don't. Especially when you just used another third round pick on a running back. How many players have more on the line than him in this preseason? I bet he's going to get a lot of carries. Feels kind of like. Uh... Who's the other Ohio State running back they had who immediately it was like, yeah. Carlos Hyde. Carlos Hyde, yeah. And he ended up having. Sermon would die to be as good as Hyde. More productive. Hyde Hyde wasn't that great, but I know what you're saying. It's, It's one thing with running backs. God, they do get a lot of hype. Like, they're just pretty famous coming into the league if they've played at a bigger program, right? Like, if you start a running back at Texas, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Bama, Georgia, <laughs> USC, it's like most people know who you are, right? Casual football fans, like, damn, I remember watching that guy a couple Saturday night games. These guys sweet, right? They just, because they're stars in college. Like, if you're a starting running back, like Bryce Hall at Iowa State, like, they just become kind of in the vernacular of college right. football. And, a lot of NFL fans, you just end up watching some college football games, and usually the best players are the quarterbacks and the running backs. It's not like I remember this uh, corner, you know, Bijan Robinson of Texas. Well, the hype on him is going to be. I mean, I, I have a buddy that does that area that thinks he's he's like a top twenty pick. But Sermon, that's where Sermon is. He's the most famous of the group, even more than Price, because Oklahoma and Ohio State, and then he had those moments for Fields teams, you know, where he, he broke the – how many people were watching Ohio State in that Big Ten game? Ten, Nine million in the Big Ten championship? We we know. I mean, their ratings are – the amount of the people that title? witnessed them. He got he hurt in the natty. But didn't he have like 200 yards in the semi? In the semis, he played really well. It was a big deal when he got hurt. What was it, like 15 million people watching that game? Like he's had – he had an eyeballs on maybe him. Maybe more. <laughs> Not a lot more, but maybe more. 